Dr. D Flow. Hey, it's Dr. D Flow, and welcome to part two of my 3D food printer. In part one, we worked on the syringe pump, which is very important for the overall build. This video happened a couple months ago, so don't forget to check it out. You may be wondering, frosting, is that really food? Well, my machine is capable of extruding and shaping any type of edible paste. So edible paste, food, close enough. Let's go ahead and get this video started. The first thing we need to do is construct the frame, which will allow for our X, Y, and Z movement. If this frame looks familiar, that's because it's the same frame that my CNC router uses. We're using a CNC router frame, the X-Carve, over a 3D printer frame because this frame allows for a lot larger work area, which allows us to print on stuff like a cookie cake, uh, maybe even two cookie cakes, it's quite wide. After about six hours, I have finished the majority of the X-Carve build. There are still a couple things left to do. For example, I completely forgot to purchase the Z-plate, which we need in order to mount the syringe pump directly to the Z-axis or indirectly through tubing. Once the syringe pump is all set up, we'll use these drag chains to aid in wire management. These will make sure that no wires get caught in the moving parts, such as the carriage or the gantry. Typically when you buy an X-Carve, you also purchase the X-Controller. The X-Controller is what powers all the motors and receives signals from the end stops. It's super easy to install. You just plug each motor into its respective terminal and plug the limit switches or end stops into their own terminal. Unfortunately, as far as I know, you can't install 3D printer firmware on the X-Controller. So we have to use our own electronics, which we'll work on in the next step. In place of the X controller, I'm gonna use a 3D printer controller board. I have two of the most popular options on the market here with me now. I have the Ramps 1.4 and Rambo. Both of these controller boards are capable of driving five stepper motors. They also have the same chipset, but there's one difference that's very significant for our project. The stepper drivers can be removed from the ramps but they can't be removed from the Rambo because they're soldered on. Now, why is this important? Well, right here I have one of the motors from the X-Carve, and this thing requires three amps to power. Neither the stepper drivers that come with the ramps or the ones embedded on the Rambo are capable of driving that kind of amperage. So because of this, we have to go with the ramps where the stepper drivers are removable. To power this stepper motor, we need to switch out these tiny stepper driver modules with this beefy 4.5 amp stepper driver. In this video, I'm not gonna explain how to interface this stepper driver with ramps, but I've created a document which I've uploaded to my website which will walk you through this process. Since we have five stepper motors, two for the Y axis, one for the X, one for the Z, and one for the extruder, we need five stepper drivers. We will mount the stepper drivers, the power supply, and ramps to a piece of wood, just to keep everything tidy. I 3D printed a case to hold the Arduino and ramps, and then I connected all five drivers to power and then to the ramps. Using a little bit of sleeving will make your messy wire runs look a lot more professional. Right now I'm connecting the X stepper motor, which is over here, into the driver. These next two stepper drivers are for the Y1 and Y2 axis. Now, ramps only has one output for the Y axis, so I've connected these two stepper drivers together. But the problem is, is that these stepper drivers are mere images of each other, so that means that when I wire one of them, I have to reverse uh, some of the wiring to make sure that they turn in the opposite direction, but at the same time, by turning in the opposite direction, they're moving the gantry in the same direction. All right, I think we're ready to plug it in. Let's hope nothing smokes. Now 
That was a good sound. That was the sound of the motors being enabled. We've got green lights and all the stepper drivers. Now let's see if we can move anything. So this, the x-axis is locked, a good sign, it's receiving power. The gantry's locked, another good sign. And the z-axis is locked as well. So now I'm plugging my computer uh, into the Arduino so that we can control it. <laughs> so this is making me really excited. First test run, we've got the y-axis working. We've got the x-axis working. Then we have the z-axis working. Usually things don't work for me the first time. So what have we accomplished here? We're controlling my CNC router uh, with RAMPS, which is a printer controller board, which is receiving G-code from a 3D printer software, uh, which is Repetier Host. So yes, uh, the project still looks like it could, uh, it could work. So this next step is gonna be a little tedious and it's a little bit hard to explain. So when I click on the move button uh, in my computer program, it tells the ramps to send a step pulse uh, to the drivers and the drivers tell the motor to turn. Uh, but how do we know how far the motors move either the gantry or the carriage or the z-axis? And so I have to go through and program that each step is equivalent to this distance in real life. So each pulse is equal to this amount of millimeters. Uh, and that's the next thing I'm gonna do. All right, I've made a lot of progress since I last changed my shirt. What have I done? So we finished the calibrations. All the end stops or limit switches, those are all hooked up and working. The cable sticking out of the top is what's going to power the syringe pump stepper motor. Speaking of the syringe pump, I've designed and 3D printed a piece that will allow us to connect the extruded aluminum base of the syringe pump to the Z-axis. So here's the piece and it will bolt on to the Z-axis here and here. And then once this is attached, the extruded aluminum will slide down on these rail-like features of this part. And then the actual weight of the stepper motor and some of the components will prevent it from moving up and down uh, in the Z direction. Typically, the tool head for the X-Carve is a palm router. I know from experience that the Z-axis has no problem lifting the weight of this router. So I've been trying to make sure that the syringe pump has about the same mass as this router or less. Originally for the syringe pump, I was gonna use uh, the same NEMA 23 stepper motor that I've used uh, four times already. But I'm thinking it might be a little bit too heavy. So I'm gonna downsize to this NEMA 17 uh, stepper motor. It still requires 2.5 amps, which means that we have to use one of the beefier stepper drivers. Um, but generally, when you downsize and you go to a smaller form factor NEMA stepper motor, you lose torque. So hopefully we'll be okay with this smaller uh, motor, but worst case scenario, we can always switch back uh, to the NEMA 23. I just attached the extruded aluminum and it's as sturdy as you can hope for using my 3D printed part. I have an odd combination of items here. I've got syringes, needles, and icing. The next thing we're gonna do is determine the optimal syringe size and needle diameter. The syringe size will affect how often we have to reload but the needle will affect our print's resolution. But if the needle's too small, we may not be able to fit the icing through it. I put a little bit of white icing in the 10 milliliter syringe, put the plunger in there, and we're gonna attach the biggest uh, diameter for the needle. So obviously we just wanna see some of it come out. And look, there it is. Oh, this is gonna be sweet. I know it might be kinda of hard for you to see, I didn't think about this, this is, this is white on white. The syringe pump will push on the plunger while dragging it along. So let's see if we can, <laughs> that's, a, that's a bad D. What we can take from this is that the frosting will fit through the largest diameter uh, needle. And if we look at the size of this, the work area that we have to print, 
This needle really doesn't seem that big, so it's, it's a good backup. Now we'll try the second smallest. That's, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that is much smaller. As you can probably guess, the smaller the diameter of the needle, the harder that I would have to push because there would be more resistance pushing the frosting through that small diameter. And I can definitely feel it. This feels four or five times as hard as the bigger syringe. This will work well and we can get some serious detail out of a needle diameter this small. I really don't think I need to try the smallest needle. I don't even think we'll be able to get it through. I think there'll be too much resistance. I'm honestly leaning towards the biggest needle diameter because as I've said before, compared to this work area, this needle is really not that big and it will speed up our print times over the smaller needles. I modified the syringe pump from part one of this series to fit the 60 milliliter syringe. Now this was kind of an arbitrary decision to go with the 60 milliliter over the 100 milliliter syringe, uh, but in the end, the 100 milliliter syringe has a bigger plunger diameter, which means it'll push more frosting per rotation of the stepper motor, which means more resistance. So by going with the 60 milliliter syringe, we're gonna have less resistance. Everything's working as it's supposed to, and what's awesome is that the Z-axis has no problem moving the syringe pump up and down. I've made the connection between the stepper motor and the driver hot swappable so that in the future I can have multiple syringe pumps ready so that I can switch them out and easily change the color of the frosting. It's time to do some test prints. I need to determine how fast we should have frosting being extruded and how quickly we can move the axes during printing without messing up. I'm getting close to my desired results, but there's still one main obstacle left to tackle, and that is the viscoelastic properties of the frosting. What does this mean? Well, when the syringe pump is pushing on the syringe, you would expect for frosting to come out. And when it's not pushing on the syringe, you'd expect no frosting to come out. But because of this property, the frosting still extrudes a little bit even after the syringe pump stops pressing on the plunger of the syringe. You can witness this phenomena through the little strings that are coming off of the letters, and this is because after the syringe pump starts pushing and lifts off to go to another letter, it's still extruding as it's moving across. I am not gonna be able to completely solve this problem because it's a property of the frosting, but I hope to remedy it through working with the vertical retraction distance of the actual syringe pump and also the retraction distance of the frosting when moving to different parts of the print when not extruding. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty happy with how the prints are looking so far. This is far better than I could ever do with my hand, and it's awesome to imagine how good a perfected system would be. Finally, I'm gonna quickly walk you through how to create a 3D printable file, also known as an STL. First, download or create some vector artwork. You can create this kind of artwork through programs like Adobe Illustrator or GIMP, then export this artwork as an AutoCAD file. Import this drawing into CAD software such as SolidWorks, which is what I'm using, or Inventor, which is free for students. Next, extrude the artwork to make it 3D and save that file as an STL. I find this to be the easiest method, but obviously you could do all the modeling in the CAD program alone and then export that as an STL. Overall, this project took me 60 to 80 hours. Do you think the content was worth my time? Let me know in the comments below. Keep in mind that I can extrude more than just frosting. I can extrude anything that sets in air, like some types of cement, epoxy. Also, on a side note, this 3D food printer is the same form factor as a bioprinter. Instead of frosting, you'd have a biologic like cells and matrix uh, and then you could 3D print tissues or organs. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out my website for more information on the build. <laughs>